Thank you for being part of eMammal. Your efforts are contributing to wildlife research that will ensure healthy wildlife populations now and into the future. In the eMammal curriculum, we follow the scientific method that's typically taught where we have a question or a hypothesis that we create, we make a test to test that question, we get our results from the test, and then we make our conclusions from those results or revise the question and test again. In ecology, that works slightly differently. It's hard to do an experiment like you would in a chemistry lab in a large natural area. So ecologists devise a hypothesis or make a question. We find a pattern in nature to test that question. Then we gather data across that pattern, make our conclusions, and, or revise our original question and retest. For example, if we were interested in the effect of urbanization on wildlife, one of the eMammal projects, we would collect data on how much wildlife there is in wild areas, rural areas, suburban areas, and urban areas, and look at the patterns across that gradient. As scientists, we can ask lots of different questions about wildlife, but our tools limit the answers we can receive. As part of eMammal, you'll be using a camera trap, or we'll be getting data from a camera trap, and a camera trap is a camera that is triggered by the heat and the motion of an animal walking by, and it takes a picture of that animal, or a bunch of pictures. And so that gives us a detection of an animal at a certain place at a certain time. And so that limits the questions we can answer with a camera trap. We can answer the question of what kinds of wildlife live in a certain place. We can compare the diversity of wildlife in one place to another place, one neighborhood to another neighborhood, one park to another park. And we can look if different kinds of wildlife are being captured by the same camera. Now, as part of eMammal, um, you'll be putting out some cameras, but you'll be joining a much larger effort that goes across a large scale. And so you can combine the data your school gathers or volunteers around your school gather you can combine that data with lots of other volunteer data, and then you can look at much bigger questions. We can join habitat data to the locations of all these cameras, and we can look at how different kinds of habitats seem to affect wildlife. We can join the um, human development data, so the number of houses or the number of roads in the area, and look at to see how that affects wildlife. After we gather our camera trap information, we're going to analyze the data and make conclusions. And during this stage, it's really important to be clear on the difference between an observation and an inference. A picture of a deer is taken at noon. And so the observation is we have a deer picture at noon. And the inference is that deer are active at noon. That might be true, but we would want to compare lots of pictures of deer to see when we have hours where we have the most pictures and the inference that deer are active during those hours we have the most pictures is a lot more supported than just getting one picture and saying that's when deer are active. To help you with using the eMammal curriculum in your classroom and in investigations with your class, the eMammal team wanted to give you a bunch of examples of specific questions that we scientists ask using camera trap data. So there's two main kinds of questions we can ask. One is just using the camera trap data and the second kind is using camera trap data with some other information like habitat. So from just the camera trap data, we can ask a bunch of specific questions. And one thing that we ask a lot is, how many different kinds of animals are in an area? The diversity. And we usually compare the diversity of different areas. We can also ask if a specific animal species is in a place. A lot of times we're looking for a certain type of predator or a certain um, type of rare species. We can also ask what the activity of different species of wildlife are. We can ask um, when coyotes are active, or when bobcats are active, or when bear um, are active. We can also ask the seasonal patterns of mammals. If we have cameras out over the, throughout the year, or through at least one change of seasons, we can ask if the activity of the animals are different among seasons. We can ask if animals are there or not there during different seasons. And we can ask if the diversity of animals is different among the seasons. As you go through the exercises in your class or in this curriculum packet, you are using camera trap data to ask questions just like Smithsonian scientists. We use relative abundance, animal activity, and the presence and absence of animals at cameras to ask if humans are having an impact on wildlife, 
how wildlife is adapting to those changes, what kind of habitat wildlife needs to survive and thrive, and how we can better manage wildlife into the future. We hope that you've enjoyed this, learned something about wildlife, learned something about science, and keep studying science in the future.